What's up, summoners, and welcome back to another episode of Pro Guides. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be walking you through this week's weekly news update. There's a lot of great things that have been recently announced, including a very long-awaited champion rework. Whether it's a new pool party skins, controversial topics, or information about the next champion, you're at Pro Guides, we've got you covered. Be sure you subscribe so you never miss out on content such as this, and let's hop right into the video. Starting us off strong, if you joined us for our last weekly news update, you'll have heard all about the new project event. This event is finally live and comes jam-packed with missions, skins, icons, and more. If you're looking to work towards a prestige skin, get started ASAP. And don't forget, missions work in bot games and in normals. So if you're looking to unlock rewards or champions, what are you waiting for? Get the pass and get going. Alongside the new project event, if you weren't looking to pick up a skin for Silas, Varus, Senna, or etc., then you're in luck because the PBE has a few new ones to offer. For all of our Braum and Set fans out there, Riot released a new pool party skin for them with some cool new effects and 8 different chromas for each one. These skins are really nice, plus it's been quite a while since Braum received a skin. If you're a fan of the skin series, I'd definitely recommend checking them out and maybe sneaking some RP into your account for the next patch. 1350 RP to be exact, unless you're looking to buy the entire bundle, in which case, I wish you and your wallet the best of luck. Before we dive into more PBE content, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com where you can view our great catalogs of coaches, courses, and overall, walkthrough of your dream rank. While you're there, don't forget to use the code RANKUP2021 to get 20% off your next subscription. If you've always been curious about how far Pro Guides can take you, now's your chance. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video. Since we're on the topic of the PBE, let's quickly go over some of the biggest changes released recently. We've been talking about him for the past few months, and he's finally out on the PBE. That's right, Summoners, Mundo's champion rework is here. While his identity has remained relatively the same, he's become a bit more mechanical with the poppy-like minigame with his passive and a fun Scion E to help him train a little bit better. Alongside with these new, fresh abilities, Mundo's also decked out with completely overhauled skins. Most of them even had their splash art redone, and they look great. While we won't be covering Mundo's changes here, be sure to check out our ability breakdown. That way you won't be taken by surprise when he goes live. Also, if you're a fan of corporate Mundo, not only does he drive around in a little car with home guards, but he also comes with 5 new chromas. That way you can customize your businessman to your liking. Unfortunately, there aren't any new balance changes yet released on the PBE. However, we do want to touch on a few balance changes from the previous video. With Nautilus's buff to his jungle clear, many are wondering where he stands in the jungle meta due to him being primarily a support champion. While a few high elo players have found success with the Titan, overall, he's struggling quite a bit to keep up. He has a decent clear time with pretty powerful ganks, but it seems like he's still too far behind and too vulnerable in not only his first clear, but invades overall. It'll be interesting to see how players will adapt, and if Nautilus will climb up and break the 50% win rate barrier, or he'll just simply continue as one of the worst off junglers at the moment. Next up, let's go over Riot's gameplay thoughts. While they're fairly usually broad with occasional scope of focus, these are specifically about mobility and their philosophy around it. As it stands, they value mobility as one of the most fundamental parts and building blocks in league combat. Whether it's meant to provide some nice flashy play potential or overall utility in order to stay in combat, it offers quite a lot to the game as a whole. That being said, it seems like mobility has slowly crept its way a little bit too far into a powerful spot and not only exceeds Riot's previous barriers, but it also leaves players feeling helpless as they can no longer keep up with certain champions and items. Overall, they're looking to overhaul mobility to make it fit a bit more, and with the reveal of their philosophy, we can get a fairly good idea of how they could handle it. Before we dive too deep into Riot's gameplay thoughts, let's quickly cover our question of the day. If you could rework one powerful tool from League of Legends, what would it be? Personally, I think Riot is on the right path to trying to rework mobility to better fit the meta and the overall game flow. But I've seen a few people argue that split pushing should be adjusted and have a greater impact on the game. What do you guys think? Let us know your answers in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's take a look at what Riot thinks mobility really means in League of Legends. Riot breaks down their philosophy for mobility into two categories with a ton of smaller sections beneath them. Let's take a look at what they qualify as a great use of mobility, and then we'll cover the poor uses afterwards. Mobility overall is a powerful tool that shouldn't be underestimated, especially when paired with weaknesses. For example, Aphilios may have no real mobility, and so he has to be careful of how he positions himself. This is heavily outweighed by the amount of damage he's able to output. The opposite side of this would be somebody like LeBlanc who is extremely mobile but only has burst damage and thus can't consistently deal AP DPS. The entire point of this is that mobility should have a cost whether you have it or not. It should be traded in some manner. While these two are fairly healthy explanations of good mobility, there are also champions like Darius who are able to fix their weak points with a low cooldown stridebreaker dash. Alongside having trade-offs for champion kits, items serve an extremely important purpose here as well. Since your item offers mobility, it should offer less useful stats as a trade-off when compared to the other items, specifically mythic items. 
For example, Shirelios offers an extremely high amount of movement speed for you and your allies, but when compared to the other items, it doesn't provide as much defense or an ally aid. Another thing that Riot values is the ability for items to have long cooldowns. Sure, it may be annoying when the enemy Jinx Gale forces away from you, but its long cooldown and being one of the sole mobility items that she can build makes it an active strategy for both players. Jinx will be looking to play back until her Gale forces up, while the enemy will look to punish her for it being on cooldown. This is an example of a healthy method of mobility that Riot is looking to have more of. Finally, there is mobility that is a little bit more situational but allows for extremely high levels of mobility in set situations. For excessive amounts of mobility to be healthy, it should have inherent constraints or have specific conditions to be met in order for it to be used to its fullest extent. A great example of this is somebody like Irelia or Yasuo who have quite decent mobility in a teamfight but can truly shine when a minion wave is near them. This will not only allow them to strategize a way to kill their enemy, but also provides the enemy with a clear counter to this high, low cooldown mobility. Overall, healthy mobility uses a myriad of things to balance it. Whether it's having a trade-off, or a longer cooldown, or a situational advantage, mobility as a whole has a lot of room to grow in the right direction. So, we covered the healthy uses of mobility with Riot's philosophy, but what good is knowing what's healthy when what has to be changed is what's ruining the game for a lot of players? While in a general case, unhealthy mobility is the complete opposite of everything that we've covered, it is a little bit more complicated than that. For example, there was a lot of talk surrounding Gale Force when the season was first released. Its ability to provide a low cooldown dash on immobile carries was both incredibly annoying and hard to deal with. These are quite literally band-aids for immobile champions. Back to our Philos example, he's meant to deal high amounts of crit damage and thus, he's immobile to balance it out. But when he had the released version of Gale Force, he now had a complete patch to his weakness by being able to dash away from his enemies like he's Lucian. Except Lucian doesn't have extremely long range in hyperscaling. Another example that we always go back to is Sidarius, as he was extremely well known for being countered hard by kiting. Well, now he has a short range dash as a first item that can remove the specific counter, which is relatively unhealthy. These kinds of holes in mobility provide a ton of frustration for players, and it's why Riot is looking to reevaluate and adjust it completely. They're looking to stick closer to their healthy ideologies and stray away from these items that break class weakness as an overall mobility creep. The issue with attacking mobility is that it works on an average basis. AKA, if on average most champions are extremely mobile, then it's a battle of who can move faster or cover more distance. Any type of mobility, including movement speed, can be a massive advantage. This means you're likely to catch somebody that you're trying to chase down, while they're less likely to catch you if they ever decided to try. Overall, it's extremely difficult to tackle general mobility within League of Legends and it'll take some time, but it's going to be interesting to see how Riot handles it. Whether it's removing certain items, increasing cooldowns, or maybe even taking a different route and providing everybody with high mobility, it's pretty exciting to see some changes being made. And don't forget, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists and talk pieces like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. We offer a lot of cool stuff for free as well as some great high elo players in our question and answer sessions. So what are you waiting for? Join up! To close out the video, to make sure that you're all informed for your next solo queue match, let's quickly do a patch rundown. As we previously mentioned, Nautilus got a few buffs to his jungle clear, and while it's not necessarily overpowered, don't be surprised when you don't see him as support. Speaking of jungle, Rumble has received some significant nerfs that will reduce his on-hit passive damage to monsters from 120 to 80. While this won't significantly slow down his clear, it'll leave him a little bit less healthy and also dissuade players from picking him. And to end off the jungle, AP Shiko got a pretty hefty nerf which isn't unexpected as he's able to hold his place within the top 5 for quite a while now. His boxes will not only deal less damage due to a lower AP ratio, but his E is also losing 5% scaling. Overall, this will look to stop AP Shaco from completely running the map and winning 1v1s due to not being able to escape his clone. Moving on to some important item changes, Divine Sunderer got a decently sized buff that not only gave it 2% extra max health damage, but it also gave 15% and 10% additional healing for melee and range champions respectively. This means they'll be more likely to be spotted on a few top laners as well as champions like Ezreal and Senna. Another massive item change was to Frostfire Gauntlet, which got its slow for ranged users cut in half in order to prevent champions like Senna from building it. There are also a ton more changes that we didn't go over, so be sure to check out the patch notes yourself before hopping into your next rank game. Nonetheless, that sums up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to join the ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video, and don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace. Thank you